cataractcoach.com showing you 12 consecutive cases of just the capsulorexis. So we're learning to be consistent here. These are all surgeries that were done in one day. This is the first surgery, and it's the toughest one. And part of it is because of our approach, we're sitting superior, a little bit closer to the visual axis. Another part of it is the visualization. This patient has cortical spoking that blocks part of the view and makes it difficult to see. And the most important thing is that this patient has a very shallow anterior chamber. And this is a hyperopic eye. And so you notice I'm taking a lot of time to do the capsulorexis. Compared to my normal cases, this is nice and slow. This is a case where you don't get a second chance. When you do the capsulorexis, that's your one chance to do it and have it done right. And so it's okay, slow down, take your time. This is a case uh, that's the longest one of the 12. And it's a nice, slow, controlled capsulorexis, and we end up with exactly what we want. So I highly encourage you as well, take your time. Case two, a lot easier, look at the view. That's first measuring, that's why I hold the instrument there, to get a mental idea of what I want. This is a big eye with big dilation, and we wanna make sure we still make that five to five and a half millimeter capsular axis. So here it's much easier to do, much better view. And of course, all my videos, we highlight that red reflex. It's a nice round capsular axis, and again, it's appropriate size. At the end here, we can go back and measure the forceps. There it is, just about perfect five millimeters. Here's another one. Here we've really highlighted the red reflex to get a good view. And again, there's the measurement in my mind. I get a rough idea. Start at the rexus, and here we go. You'll notice in all of these cases, these are the exact same cases that we showed for the incision video where I showed 12 consecutive corneal phacal incisions. These are the exact same 12 cases in the same order. So it becomes very easy to correlate them. Beautiful Rex is done, and that'll complete it. Let's go to the next one. So here's looking at the next one. And again, sitting superior. So some of these videos I'll sit superior, some are sitting temporal. My preference is temporal. I'll sit superior for patients who have with the rule of stigmatism so we can have our fake incision help rather than worsen the existing corneal astigmatism. So there's the rexus, and we're making it a little bit more generous this time. Um, it's gonna be about five and a half millimeters, and that looks great. And there we go, completing it. So in all these videos, we like to float in the incision. We don't wanna distort the incision. Let's look at the next one. Again, poking in, sitting superiorly, Poking with one arm, just closing the arm, that allows us to just start the rexus. I don't believe in using a cystotome for most cases. I don't find it necessary. And we'll grab onto it here. And look at the pivoting motion. So we pivot to try to float and stay in the center of that incision. Grabbing it here, and nice pivoting motion, bringing it around where we want it. How many grabs should you do? Well, you could do as few as three grabs. You could do four, five, six, whatever grabs you think. It's whatever your comfort is. I want the bottom line. I want to have a nice result. So here again, poking in and starting the rexus. You notice I poke in right in the middle and then start a rexus. There, we got an edge. And I'll measure it again, get it a good idea. And then we can spiral this out and make it the appropriate size. This is a very large myopic eye, big white to white, 13 millimeter white to white, big dilation. So you can't use the pupil size to judge the rexus. You have to measure it. And of course, that's with these forceps that are marked off at two and a half from the tip and five millimeters from the tip. Now, this is a smaller eye, and it's a patient with Flomax. So here, I want to have a sufficiently large rexus so I don't run into issues. We're going to make this rexus just about the size of that pupil. And then pivoting it around again, that looks great. We could even go a little bit under the iris if we need to. So in here, I'm aiming for a little bit larger rexus, five and a half millimeters would be ideal. That'll give us a good overlap still and have more ease in bringing the nucleus out of the capsule bag and finishing it there. And let's look at the next. Another big dilation, again, measuring. So you see a pattern now. By seeing so many cases in a row of just the rexus, you can see the pattern of how we start it, how I measure the motions, again, grabbing it, pivoting, 
Look at the pivoting motion. Now the instrument turns the other direction. Look at the base of the forceps and how they switch from one side to the other. That's really going to give you a good idea of how much pivoting is involved. And here at the end, making sure it doesn't go too peripheral, spiral out to an appropriate size, that looks great. And another one. Here operating at about the 60 degree meridian, which is the steep one. Again, a good measurement in my mind to get an idea. Grabbing the rex's edge here, turning it, and we'll keep going round and round. And look at the pivot. So now the base is to the right, tips are to the left. Now look, we flip the pivot. Now all of a sudden, look where the base is going to be. Exactly. And so there's a lot of motion outside the eye. Remember, we're using the incision as a pivot point. The instrument outside the eye moves a lot more than the instrument in the eye. That's the benefit of the pivoting. So it's, in essence, the opposite of a boat oar. So looking here again, that's just a measurement at the end, making sure. So pre-measurement here, poke in, start the rexus, and then nice and easy taking our time. You also notice that we tend to move around the eye um, without gaping the forceps, and that, of course, prevents gaping of the incision. Again, grabbing the capsule here, pivoting, good pivoting motion. Look how the base of the instrument moves so much. And we can finish that up. That looks great. So just a couple more cases to go. I think you really have got the idea now. And I think there's a big benefit of seeing so many cases in a row. Again, another big eye, big dilation. Poke in here and we can start. And if we need to, we can measure. After a while, after doing so many thousands of cases, you're going to have your own mental gauge, your own mental calipers. And you'll be able to tell, in most cases, what's the appropriate size. And you won't be confused by the dilation size or the white to white, etc. You'll be able to make this very consistently. And there we go, turning the rexus, looking good. And we'll finish that up there. Beautiful. Let's show you one last case here of the capsule rexus. And this is a technique that I think all of our readers can learn of just using forceps alone to start the caps rexus. These tips of the forcep are not particularly sharp. They won't puncture a glove or they won't puncture skin, but they're enough that we can puncture the uh, anterior lens capsule. And again, you see the pivoting. Notice there are no wrinkles in the cornea throughout the procedure. So watch this video again if you need to. It's a nice to have these 12 cases in a row to get an idea of just consistency. Thank you for watching.